Good morning, folks. I have to start by saying that those of you who clicked the like button yesterday and normally don't, you dominated YouTube's algorithm. Thank you. Let's see what we've got today, starting at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star were calm, but not without features of note, specifically the dark coronal holes. Those will face Earth in the coming days to continue the earthquake watch. The solar tornado we noticed yesterday is still cranking along and actually has developed some smaller vortices behind it. Let's go to the solar wind. Data dropouts on all solar wind products is a bit suspicious this morning, like happy birthday, SO, good luck with the stream analysis this morning. What we do have tells us that the solar wind speed is rising and the phi angle flipped. We are in a bit more excited and unstable geomagnetic conditions as of this morning. Folks, while we had no major earthquakes like we were able to report yesterday, the 5.6 in Iceland is relatively rare, and with the volcanic situation on the island, these rumbles are always worth concern. We've got some cool animations today, starting here at the Radial Dwarf Galaxy merger with our Milky Way. The model uses the shells seen in star orbits to walk back the history of their motion, and they need the impact to explain it, muddled together almost unrecognizably today. This next one is interesting as they're using density mapping of the lower crust to find pieces plunged beneath the western United States as the most brittle plate on Earth remains afloat somehow, basically showing how Cascadia plunged below and also how there appears to be a spreading rift like in the Atlantic here in the eastern Pacific. Cascadia still has some slippage to do. Moving on next to the oceans, and it turns out that the southern oceans are sucking up heat, but uh, only below 700 meters down. First of all, that's screaming volcanic activity, or outright data error, but there's more. They say the heat is being locked there in the deep somehow, and that it will shut down the ocean overturning as we've examined in the north. They ask if that could make the oceans warmer on the top, like they weren't even paying attention to the results of their work. Folks, this next one is special. Nothing about water temperature or their version of global warming is going to make hurricanes move faster across ocean basins or stretch their preferred zones towards the poles. We have shown how cyclones are full-scale global electric circuit systems, sucking in at the ground level and continuing the helical vortex column up to deliver that current to the top of the sky. The wind and ionic flows are faster the higher you go, and the greater connectivity to the puppeteer above pulling the strings is due to Earth's weakening magnetic field and the ionosphere making up for it. The weaker field is also driving ozone anomalies. Last year, we had the record low Antarctic ozone hole. Six months ago, it was a record large Arctic ozone hole, and now we're breaking a large record down south as well. This wild back and forth is expected to continue during the ongoing magnetic shift of our planet, with larger swings to both extremes until the child can no longer hold his grip and flies off the swing. I know a little something about that, the past, the people, the evidence, the rebirth of catastrophism, it rises just before the fall. We're a couple months away from the new book. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.